Today I'm going to talk about a couple of ways to use a text to find more texts. Now, the most traditional way that I know to do this um, is called mining a text. So say you have a really nice new book that just came out last year uh, that has some really important conversation in it. And in the notes, you go through and you find the major conversation partners. Uh, you can do this with a book, with an article, with almost any resource. And you find the major conversation partners in the notes, and then you can go back to those resources and find them. Now this works great if you're looking at a brand new book or a brand new article, but what about if you find something that's older and you want to see what its influence is, who its conversation partners are that come after it. So a tool that can help you do this is Google Scholar. So let me show you what it looks like to do this in Google Scholar. So if you just go to scholar.google.com, you'll notice that this is a very different looking uh, uh, thing than, or not a very different looking thing than uh, Google, your usual search engine. However, it's got a totally different uh, algorithm that it's using in the background. Um, so what I'm gonna do is uh, use a book that's a little bit older, not terribly old, but a little bit older uh, to, uh, and look it up here in Google Scholar. This is Jonathan Z. Smith's Map is Not Territory. So uh, this is a 1979 book that uh, is very influential in religious studies scholarship. And you can tell because when I look it up in this uh, database here, you'll notice that it says cited by 855. That means in the Google Scholar's database, there are 855 other sources that use this book in their notes. Uh, so basically what this is doing is taking us from 1978 to today thinking about this. Now, uh, you'll notice that there are a few tools that you can use to narrow this down. Of course, first of all, let's just look at the whole list. This is what it looks like when 855 people are citing your, your book. Um, this is a very useful thing within that. You can search within citing articles, say that what you're really interested in here is there's a, there's a theme of shame that uh, Jonathan Z. Smith uses in this book. So you can use that to search within citing articles by clicking this little block right here. Um, and then you can narrow your things down to just things that mention shame that are part of the citing articles. Uh, all right, another thing that you can do is narrow your search by uh, a custom time range. Now this can, you can click custom range and use any range of dates that you want. Say you were particularly interested in how this book or this concept uh, acted in a particular moment in the 80s, for example. You could put that time range in there. Uh, if we, we click since 2016, you'll notice that even since 2016, there have been a significant number of books and articles that have quoted this resource. Uh, also, you can sort these things by date or relevance. Uh, relevance makes sure, you know, helps the things that are, uh, that use the resource most float to the top, uh, but sort by date will allow you to put the things in here are, that are the most, the very most recent things. All right, so if we go back and look at all of our, our list here, you'll notice that there are uh, things from all over the internet on Google Scholar. Um, this is a, it's a very useful way to do this kind of research. Um, also, if you're thinking about um, a, uh, a book or an article that you want to keep updated on to see that uh, when new things come out about this particular piece, say you're uh, working on a longer project, like a thesis, for example, or a dissertation, uh, you could create an email alert with this little button right here. You just click create alert and the uh, and Google Scholar will send me an email uh, whenever the term shame is associated with a new citation of Map is Not Territory. Um, and it will give me, uh, if I click create a, an alert, it will let me, uh, it will send me an email when this happens. So the sample results since 2007, you'll see it gives you a little sample of what it, 2017, you'll, you'll see what it would look like if I got an email like this, this material would be there. Uh, sometimes though, if you're in Google Scholar, you will notice that some of these don't have PDFs associated with them. Don't despair, 
Uh, usually when we're doing this kind of uh, research, if you go back and uh, if you use the material here and take it to your uh, to Primo to our library software, uh, you will often, often, not every time, but often be able to find those articles in full text form. All right, uh, I hope you have a fun time both mining a text for text and then reverse mining uh, from an older text. Thanks very much.